Hello, everybody. Today, I'm here to tell you about something really interesting. I will tell you about how evolution of the species happens. We'll talk about Sir Charles Darwin, his relevant information, and the legacy that he left to us. Let's get started. In the 1800s, geologists began to realize that the Earth is much older than anyone had previously thought. Evidence showed that gradual process had changed the Earth's surface over millions of years. Some scientists saw evidence of evolution in the fossil records. However, no one had been able to explain how evolution happens until this man whose image you can see now. He was Charles Darwin. All this began when Darwin signed on for a five-year voyage around the world. He served as a naturalist on the British ship, the HMS Beagle. During the trip, Darwin made observations that helped him for a theory about how evolution happens. The Beagle's journey is started on this image. Along the way, Darwin collected thousands of plants and animal samples. He kept careful notes of his observations. One interesting place that the ship visited was the Galapagos Islands. These islands are found 965 kilometers west of Ecuador, a beautiful country located in South America. Darwin noticed that the animals and plants on the Galapagos Islands were a lot like those in Ecuador. However, they were not exactly the same. The finches of the Galapagos Islands, for example, were a little bit different from the finches in Ecuador, and the finches of each island different from the finches on the other island. The image that you can see now shows you the beak of each finch is different, even they belong to the same archipelago. The beak of each finch is adapted to the way that this bird usually gets food. After returning to England, Darwin puzzled over the animals on the Galapagos Islands. He tried to explain why the animals seemed so similar to each other, yet had so many different adaptations. For example, Darwin hypothesized that the island finches were descended from the South American finches. The first finches on the islands may have been blown from South America by a storm. Over many generations, the finches may have evolved adaptations for the various island environments. In Darwin's times, farmers or breeders had produced many kinds of farm animals and plants. These plants and animals had traits that were desired by the farmers and breeders. A trait is a characteristic that can be passed from parents to offspring throughout genes. The process in which humans select which animals or plants to produce based on a certain desired traits is called selective breeding. The many breeds recognized today are the results of a careful selective breeding for functional attributes deemed beneficial to the human owners, including hunting, guarding, and herding, and desirable physical characteristics such as school shape, size, and coat variation. You can see the results of the selective breeding in many kinds of organisms. For example, people have bred horses that are particularly fast or strong, and farmers have bred crops that produce large fruits and that grow in a specific climate. From 1903 to 19, 1910, Saunders used selective breeding to develop Murphy's wheat at the Central Experimental Farm of Ottawa. His work helped develop cereal crops for Canadian growing conditions, while also producing good flour for the growing industry. During Darwin's time, Thomas Malthus wrote a famous book entitled and the say of the principle of population. Malthus noted that humans have the potential to reproduce rapidly. He warned that food supply could not support unlimited population growth. 
This image shows how Malthus illustrated the relationship between human population growth and the time and food supply. However, Malthus pointed out that human population are limited by human choices or by problems such as starvation and diseases. After reading Malthus' work, Darwin realized that any species can produce many offspring. He also knew that the population of all species are limited by starvation, disease, competition, and predation. Only a limited number of individuals survive to reproduce. Thus, there is something special about the survivors. Darwin reasoned that the offspring of the survivors inherit traits that help the, sur the offspring survive in their environment. Darwin had begun to think that a species could evolve over time, but most geologists at that time did not think that Earth was old enough to allow the slow changes. Darwin learned new ideas from Principles of Geology, a book by Charles Lyell. This book presented evidence that Earth had formed by natural processes over a long period of time. It became clear to Darwin that Earth was much older than anyone had ever thought. After his publish on the HMS Beagle, Darwin privately struggled with his ideas for about 20 years. Then, in 1858, Darwin received a letter from fellow naturalist named Alfred Russell Wallace. Wallace had arrived at the same ideas about evolution that Darwin had. In 1859, Darwin published a book, a famous book, called On the Origin of a Species by Means of Natural Selection. In his book, Darwin proposed the theory of that evolution happens through natural selection. Natural selection, the process by which organisms that are better adapted to their environment survive and reproduce more successfully than less well-adapted organisms do. Well, this is how Darwin made his theory about evolution. I hope you liked this class. Thank you very much.